Hello and welcome to the second part of this provenance map video. In the first part, we created this map on UMAP and imported locations of some of the artifacts in Rose House in Kilkenny. And in this part, we want to add photographs to our map. So when you click on these now, you get some information about the artifact, but we want to display a photograph here maybe here or maybe above the donor. I haven't made up my mind about that yet. What you can do is you can take a photograph. It makes sense to have access to the things behind or in display cases, because if you take a picture through the glass, there might be a reflection and you might not want that. Um, so if you're involved in running the museum, the Little Heritage Center, hopefully you can get access to that. So I had done that when I was still working in Roth House. I had taken pictures of some of the artifacts and I've gone back in preparation for this video and taken some more photographs as well so that I would have a good array of different kinds of artifacts. And I uploaded them all to Wiki Commons, which is something you can and you should also do because they are anyone all over the world can find them and can use them for if they want to make a map like that, or if they want to have a PowerPoint presentation, or if they want to research local history, like transition year students or whoever. And it is good to have them in a place um, like Wiki Commons. So I have done videos about Wiki Commons before, if you want to go back and watch these and how to upload, because I won't go into that now. We're just gonna rely on the photographs I've already uploaded in a category that I have called, I think, Collections of Roth House. Um, so I can find them easier or anyone else can find them easier. So in the search bar at the top right, you type category collections of Roth House and hopefully that'll work. Yeah, it's here. So you see there are 23 files now and some of them are for this project. So let's go with the Tutor button here. It's down here. So there you click on it and you get this displayed. And this is, I think that's pretty proud of that picture. And if you click on the bottom right where it says more details, it shows you the picture again and then some stuff. And then down here we have a caption tutor button in Roth House Museum and Garden and a description. And thinking ahead, I put the acquisition number in the description. So now I can even do this project without going back to the museum. And yeah, some more information. And also the camera location, which is, you know, it'll just point to the museum. And we can use this now. And we use this by clicking on use this file on the web and it will give us a page URL, which we don't want to use because this will just, if we put this in our table or in our map, it'll just go to this page and we don't want that. We want the picture displayed in the map. And I'm fairly sure this one also doesn't work because I've tried it before and it didn't work. But instead, and that is a bit annoying and difficult, you have to use the one down here and you unfortunately, you can't just copy this bit. You have to copy the whole thing. So let's do that. Uh, also, before we do that, we want to choose a different size. So we want to go for 256 pixels wide rather than 512. Trust me, I've tried it out before. Um, so we copy this and we go back into our spreadsheet and find the artifact. Shooter button and go into our column that we have called photograph. And then we paste all that text up here, preferably, rather than into this the field here, the cell, because we have to delete a lot of it. So all we need is, the first thing you can delete is the closing thing with the A. Like if you know HTML, you know what to delete, but I presume most of you don't, I don't know. So all we need is the, and I think actually also the quotes and everything before the HTTPS, which is a lot. So you end up with HTTPS slash upload wikimedia.org, Wikipedia Commons, la da da, and it ends with .png. 
or in your case might be dodge jpeg but i tend to upload them all in png so let's try that and then very important the attribution the pictures are all free to use on uh, on wiki commons but you do have to attribute the person who took the picture in this case me but it, you know, it's the same for everyone. It doesn't really matter that this is me. Um, you have to use that. So you see here in attribution. Actually, you could just copy this. This might work better. Just the tiny text here. Because it might, with all the weird brackets and all that and commas, it might mess up um, your spreadsheet. Because it did earlier for me. So if you just copy this bit and put that in the column that I have called attribution. And just in case, we'll also delete the commas here because the the character separated file, character separated values are separated by commas. And if we have commas in the cells, that might mess with the whole thing. So I have only done that for the Tura button now. I've saved that now and we will import that into our UMAP. So we go into the editing mode hit the import data button, browse, find our file, click on open and very important, replace layer content, tick that box and import and save. And then disable editing and go to just to check, um, we put that in the river Noor. Of course, it doesn't work because we haven't defined uh, where to put it in the in our little template. Silly me. So what we want to do now is we want to have an image displayed here between category fashion and the donor. And we also maybe want this gap to be smaller, but that's because this is a heading. So if we just define it as bold rather than a heading, it should get rid of this gap. So we go back into the layer. Uh, options, interaction options, and click on the question mark here. So instead of the one hash, we want a double star for bold. And to add the photograph, that's a bit tricky because it's actually not explained here, but I figured it out. So it says here to display an image, you have to use two wavy lines but you actually have to use triple wavy lines. So we want to put that here after category. So triple wavy line, photograph, photograph, and triple closing wavy lines, and maybe a break there. And then we also, because we painstakingly added the attribution into our spreadsheet, we also want to display it so we don't get into trouble with whoever took the photograph. So we put the photo attribution down at the very bottom because it's least interesting for the user of the website, but it still has to be there, the fine print. Photograph attribution. I'll just copy that because I don't want to type it again and add the once wavy lines there, like we have it here in the attribution. And then save that. Disable editing. Fingers crossed. Click on the same thing again. And there we have the button now displayed as a little image there. And the gap doesn't really, hasn't really become any smaller. Um, maybe if we just delete the one line. No. Oh, maybe that's because I have no description for it. It replaces the description line with an empty line. So that shouldn't be too worrying. So I can continue doing that, adding all the photographs and the attributions in my spreadsheet and then import again and then it should be finished for now. And I'll do that and I'll show you the results. I'm nearly finished now. This is the last one. I just want to say I didn't take the picture for this project, this picture, but somebody, I can't remember who, had contacted Rothhaus, the staff there, 
to because they were looking for a picture of this and I took the picture. It's a massive picture that is hung in a very awkward position in the museum. Very difficult to take a picture of it. I think I had to use a panorama mode and I had to crop the frame off. That was the best I could do because I didn't have a, a wide lens for my camera for this. But this is the last one I have to add here. Okay, so you can see all the pictures are taken by me um, in two different versions of my name for some reason. I don't really know how that happened. Um, I might have uploaded some from Wikipedia, writing the article about Rothaus, um, or working on the article. I only wrote the German one. Um, I presume that's why. I don't know. Anyway, I will save this now and upload it into our UMAP import. Import, not upload. Replace layer content, import, save. And I'll just go through all of them. Please work. There. Whew, Jesus. Um, so that works. I'll just go through some of them to check if they're working. As one of the reasons why I chose the 256 pixel width, um, because otherwise it'll take even longer to load all the pictures and you don't want people to have to wait around. Eventually. The suspense is killing me. If you have, if you're really that techy and you have photogrammetry or 3D models of your artifacts, which we do have of the Sheila Negek and of some of the other things, you can uh, also use the sketch fab link or the iframe. I won't go into that. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what to do. But you can just use the, in the interaction options, you can use the iframe, which is explained down here. I'm just saying that. I won't do that for this map now, because I want to kind of try to keep it simple. It does seem to have worked for all the artifacts, hopefully. I won't complete the map now, because it's just an example, it's just to show you what can be done. I will link the map in the video description so you can have a look and explore. They all seem to work for now. Thank God. I hope you found that interesting and you aren't too overwhelmed with all the technicalities. It's, I guess it gets easier if you do a couple and you could also do, um, we could do a map of stuff from the National Museum or anywhere. You know, if you find the images and if they're well explained in Wiki Commons and where it, the provenance is given, it's not very likely, but um, that's what you could do. And thank you for watching. And if you want to subscribe or like this video, please do so. I won't keep you. And I shall see you in another one soon. Slan.